Good Zangpla and very warm welcome to our weekly news magazine program, Bhutan This Week. My name is Cheku. Our top stories this week. His Majesty the King on royal tour to southern Dongkuk to inspect proposed sites where training centers for Gelsung will be built. National Council members discuss increasing grading of rape offenses. And Paray FC draws against Defenders FC of Sri Lanka in preliminary qualifiers match of Asian Football Confederation Cup. Now the story in details. His Majesty the King granted an audience to ICT teachers from across the country attending a 12-day coding training on Thursday in Gelfu. The training is intended to prepare ICT teachers to teach coding to students. The Education Ministry, Department of Information, Technology and Telecom and Royal Education Council are working with Leap Learner to introduce coding in schools from classes PP to 12 from the 2020 academic session as part of the education flagship program. His Majesty the King also granted audience to teachers attending a workshop on continuous formative assessment as an alternative to examinations organized by the REC and MOE. On 21st January, His Majesty granted an audience to teachers and facilitators conducting the Class 12 exam paper evaluation in Samsi. His Majesty began the royal tour to the southern Zonkaks on 18th January to inspect proposed sites where the training centers for Gelsung will be built. On 19th of January, His Majesty granted audience to participants of the 8th Bhutan Executive Service Training at the Royal Institute of Governance in Funsiling. During the visit, His Majesty also granted audiences to RBA officers in various wings in the south and to Dzongkok officials of Samsi and Sarpang. His Majesty will visit Samdujongkar next and continue the royal tour through the eastern Dzongkoks. With a growing number of fronting cases in the country, the Legislative Committee of the National Council is proposing for a new section related to fronting in the Penal Code Amendment Bill of Bhutan 2019. Fronting is defined as leasing of a license to another party to run a business. As per the new section, a defendant shall be guilty of an offence of fronting if the defendant leases or subleases hires or otherwise permits another person to use or operate one's license unless otherwise permitted by laws or policies. License includes any clearance, approval, consent, no objection, registration, concession and the likes issued by a competent authority. The offence as per the proposal shall be a maximum misdemeanor if the defendants are Bhutanese nationals. And if one of the defendants is a person other than a Bhutanese national, it will be a felony of fourth degree or a value-based sentencing, whichever is higher. The Rojengi, Chotamki Tokale, Largi Kalube, Sonja Milashon, the Ansu, the Ringajigi, Nigel Timdeb, the Tinian Bishan of a Chaju to be Asso Bridge Virgin, the Tuipsumbe, the Timgilbe, Sonja Milash, Tuning in Yangadu Sunil. Tato Sensudi, Natura Dup Nanki, Imdochi Boachin, the Namisamichi Yankai Maje, the Tachinalero, Pumtagi, Chatuchengi Tumigi, Shudozumbe, the Laluchi Chokdu Yudigibe, Lakirgi, Lentabda, the Sugi Chokdu Yudigibe, the Saga Tumi du Sunil. The Laluchi, Lakirchi, Lenigi Tunlui, the Yadama Chanigi Sido Mebabe, the Yan Kadibu Juna Mashibabe, the Sorogi Tin Sorogi Tunlu, then the Gibe Dimichi do Sishuni, the Dibole Tendigibe, Naregi Shune Serora, the Nachigani Sulmin, Lachuginal Hubdalu, Tekardu, the Nacharegia Kabgi Nankugi, Dubimigi Nankului, the Anning Yerimna took Madame Shindalu. Do give me Kunji in the the two day Toshi Nature Pogo so the low that the misdemeanor mula, the low chile sum sigiquana, the centric ponigi, Yanka do shinilla. The Aneva Yasovachin, the Tatusunsiki Pana Changi, Chotam Chami de Sola, bar license, 
قال الله شو كاين بلا لا لو دور ريلو ان نمشي سي لا لو لو ريلو ان نمشي سي تا انا في انفاجن تشانسو مسو قال تا تا سنتي فوني انفستيشن اي لا Some members, however, are of the opinion that it is first important to understand why people are into fronting. Member of Parliament was with the different views as they did not support the idea. To be me, chigi, the to be me, shenchulu, larchena lo, kachibe tango bina se ani chi hagogobtu la tambara. Ta perna me chi tulmingi la be yan kongkora gi contract deso disega piuma so yan ngelegi la ten be odalo te ngeja chi di kongi license cancellation suila. ते शुंगी हों ले चिम के ते कोंगे लाखेर दे कोंगे छह में ताम दालो ते मी शेंची की लाखेर दे लेन दिग ला 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 टू बे बेनी की गोका पियो अचिन ते दिगे तब ते उम्मा दे उगा दे बे थे उंगा ते चिम लो ते की शब्द जुंखोए में बचोनी की नियंका दूलर ते दरी की थे खाली हेब दालो जुबी नंगो लालो ते � ता टीम माफोनी की देन लो ता आनी टीम दे दरिंग अच्छी की ते छाजे जुगो बचीन ते अच्छी मिसर यों लो कोगा धरती दी हिंसा सब बेगो खाचे ला तांबा से उतालो ला ता निबा से उतालो ता देवे तांबी की ता तांगो बनी दी की ता निये दिन दी कची ना यहाँ चीन अच्छी छोक छोक तम थोपनी की देन लो रा ना � यहाँ ची मान शुं बेसल शुं लु लु जो बे ते ना छोक थाम ची गो बे सिलब नी लु नेम्से दी की बे जो ही ना यहाँ ची मान मी रेरे जिंदगी क्या साल उतार दी की बे बे ही ना दिसुंगा ची के हाँ गो के छे से शुनी ला While hard facts and statistics are difficult to obtain, information from various government documents and media articles show that fronting is thriving in the border towns despite government's efforts to control it. In January 2006, an internal report of the Ministry of Trade and Industry noted that out of 841 businesses inspected in Finsoling, 214 licenses were confirmed to be fronting cases. Likewise, in 2003, more than 48 people were suspected of fronting in Samdrubjongkar and Gelifu. The inclusion of the new section will be finalized during the adoption of the Penal Court Amendment Bill of Bhutan 2019 on 7th February. This is Pasung Doji for BBS News. Deliberating on the Penal Court Amendment Bill of Bhutan 2019, members of the National Council proposed to increase the grading of rape offences. The Member of Parliament of Punakha proposed the amendment along with the suggestion to include two new clauses. According to Punakha's Member of Parliament, Lucky Dolma, the offence of rape, including the rape of a married person and pregnant women, should be increased to the third degree felony from the fourth degree felony. दुगी निगल के ठीम दे भी लियो चुप दिवा दोनों से निजा तो चुरे ऐसे में चुसो ढूँढो जीव दाउ चुप आज नानी छोम किन से अच्छा आओ को को आनी सोए एरिम जीबा इम्बेला ता आओ को मी दा वांस लुडल बे मी दी एरिम जीबा ढंडा बे शब्द ते घरा की बाव चिंदी दी के गिजाले मातू पे थोंची दिवे नी दी के � she also recommended grading an offence of gang rape, including the gang rape of a pregnant woman, as second-degree felony instead of a third-degree felony. Recommending two new clauses, she said, should an offence of rape of a pregnant woman cause fetal death, the offence should be graded under second-degree felony. And for the same consequence due to gang rape, the offence should be graded as first-degree felony. She also said the girl, which is paid as compensation to the victim's husband in case of a rape of a married person, should be replaced by compensation to the victim. The <laughs> ते मापा के यों अम्सुदा आलोग के हैंसो की के यों छोक दूलो जो देवे फिर दूसरे शुनी ना इन रोए ती नहीं की ते चीन की थोड़ा चीम अच्छे ते घरागी तादी बेरोए थंजुलो क्यूमी की ते कहाँ क्यूबे से वाजी न्यम्गी पादी क्यूबे से शुनी ना दिवे नी दी की न्यम्गी पादी लो क्यू न्यम्गी पादी लो ते क्यूथी बे 
Gaugi tama kiti be na antap chiyo bachin di juche chiyo besup chiyo bachin sebe ge shwa yin se shunin la. Most members who voiced their opinions on grading rape cases supported the recommendations. Meanwhile, the Legislative Committee of the House is proposing not to repeal Section 213 and 214 of the Penal Code as the National Assembly did during its last session. The sections discriminalize unnatural sex. This, however, gathered a discussion with mixed reactions from the members. Failing to come to a consensus, the House decided to discuss further on the issue on Monday. Kiladim for BBS News. Thimpo District Court sentenced two Bhutanese men to a prison term of three years each for illegal transportation of immigrants and a non bhutanese man to 18 months imprisonment for soliciting the crime. The judgment, based on the Immigration Act of the Kingdom of Bhutan 2007, was passed on 9th January. According to the judgment, the convicts, taxi drivers by profession, transported two Indian workers from Fensling to Thimpu without valid immigration documents in June last year. They had agreed to do so for a total of 15,000 newton. According to the investigation report, the accused had managed to hide the workers from the check posts and immigration inspections on the way. Similarly, the Indian man was ordered a prison term for arranging the two Indian workers. He had asked his father and one of the convicted taxi drivers over the phone to bring the workers. He had also fixed the taxi fare of 15,000 newton. All five men, including the workers, were arrested from Hongso following a tip-off. The two foreign workers have already been deported to their country. For Chang'e Doji in Wang Difoda, Slumpem for BBS News. Almost 12,000 students have passed the Class 10 examinations of 2019. The results were declared on 18th January by the Bhutan Council for School Examinations and Assessment. The overall pass percentage is 93.6%, which is almost 3% less than that of 2018. Namita Giri from Lungtan Zampa Middle Secondary School topped the Bhutan Certificate of Secondary Examination 2019 with 93%. With 92.80%, the second toppers are Hari Prasad Acharya from Dumfu Central School and Dikil Hamo from Gongzim Ugendoji Central School. Nima Wangdiweba from Dagapella Middle Secondary School took the third position with 92.60%. With no cut-off point this time, all 11,810 students who passed the examination will be eligible for enrollment in government schools or private schools funded by the government. Prior to the result declaration, the ministry had already asked the interested students opting to apply to any of the private schools to first register online last week. The online registration listed about 8,000 students. But the ministry will provide scholarships to only 2,700 students in private schools and 9,400 students will be absorbed into government high schools. Many students uh, have approached the Ministry of Education whether they could withdraw from the, the, from the registration that they have done. So we told them it is uh, just, we just wanted to know the number and it is not uh, really uh, mandatory or compulsory for the students uh, to, to, to study in the private school. If they now choose not to study, option is left to them. Admissions into private schools will start from Monday next week. Admission into government schools will take place once admission in private schools is complete. More than 12,000 students from 125 secondary schools appeared for the Bhutan Certificate of Secondary Examinations last year, of which 804 failed and 144 were absent. Sunampem for BBS News. No cases of novel coronavirus have been reported in Bhutan so far. According to the Health Ministry, measures are already in place to stop the disease from entering the country. The outbreak of the virus, which causes pneumonia, was first detected in the Chinese city of Wuhan last month. Infrared fever scanning and screening of respiratory symptoms at the Paro International Airport and in-flight announcements have been underway since the news of the outbreak was first reported. Besides, the Health Ministry has stepped up the national surveillance system, issued cautionary notification to the public and alerted 
all health workers in the country. The virus has spread to several countries because of people traveling frequently. It is dangerous if one is infected with the virus. However, for now, it has not reached Bhutan. We don't have reports about it. The health ministry is well prepared to avoid the virus from coming in. We have officials at the airport monitoring the situation. As of now, the viral pneumonia has spread to over seven countries with Thailand and Japan in the list as well. Cases meeting the criteria of the disease have also been reported in Singapore and as of now, the test results are awaited. According to the Health Ministry, since the preparedness in actions for prevention and control of the pneumonia has been stepped up in all the countries and China is trying their best to contain it at the earliest, the disease is not likely to reach Bhutan. However, the ministry is vigilant and prepared just in case. Health officials advise that people traveling by air should avoid close contact with people suffering from respiratory infections. Moreover, anyone with travel history showing symptoms of pneumonia should visit a hospital immediately. Sring Dandup for BBS News. Residents of Chuna in Principal Regiok of Samsi are refusing to give their clearance to contractors for collection of dolomite and dolomite dust. They are adamant that if community contractors do not get a share of the plot, they will not give public clearance to contractors from outside. Yesterday's was the third meeting in about a week's time held to put an end to the issue. But the villagers made it clear that unless they get to work along with outside contractors, they won't give public clearance. This has been going on since 2018. In 2018, they applied and we applied too. But theirs got approved and ours wasn't. Surveys and all were done but our application was ignored. But we gave our clearance and they worked for two years, but they haven't been any help to the village. The village is as it is. This year, seven plots have been identified, from which the villagers are asking for one plot to be given to community contractors. We want to earn a decent living, thus we have followed all formalities and even paid the 10,000 Newton fees. But our applications got rejected and other two contractors got approved. And now seven more contractors want the clearance. We are the ones who actually need this work. We hope we get it. Villagers are worried continuous meetings are being conducted to force their hand. In previous meetings itself, we have decided not to give public clearance if our demands are not met. But we had meetings on the 15th, 16th and today too. These continuous meetings are like public harassment. This is a concern for us. Meanwhile, the Geok is concerned that if surface collection works are not carried out in time, silting during monsoon, which is excess accumulation of sand and stones along the river banks, will damage agriculture fields. Last year alone, 13 households were affected because of silting. If works can begin quickly, it will only benefit the villagers. But the villagers have their own collective point. They have the willingness to work, but their application got cancelled. How and why their application got cancelled, we at the Geok have no information. Another concern is the rampant illegal collection happening near the Indian border. Villagers are also questioning the lack of strict vigilance by the Department of Geology and Mines and the Forest Range Office. This is where illegal mining is taking place. Looking at the fresh track marks of excavators and trucks, it is evident that illegal mining has taken place just last night. Now what the villagers here are saying is that 
while mining illegally, the workers are Indian nationals, but they are also suspecting that Bhutanese are involved because some of the trucks which come here to get their load are having Bhutanese numbers. The Department of Geology and Mines confirmed that Bhutanese are also involved in illegal mining. Several truckers have been caught as well. But the department says constant monitoring is a challenge and that the place is dangerous to ply at night. For now, back at the village, people have decided they will not back down unless they are given their fair share of the deal. Sharab Doji, BBS News, Samti. Paro Football Club had to settle for a draw against Defenders Football Club of Sri Lanka in its first match of the preliminary qualifiers round of the Asian Football Confederation Cup. The two teams scored three goals each in the match played on Wednesday at the Race Course International Stadium in Colombo, Sri Lanka. However, Paro FC will have the away goal advantage when they play the second leg match in Thimpu on Wednesday. As the first leg of the qualifiers kicked off at the Race Course International Stadium, the host team had their noses in front as they shocked Borough FC with an early goal in the fourth minute. However, Borough FC equalized just eight minutes later through a debut goal from their new forward, the Cameroonian Fabuso. Outside the box, gets the cross in, and that's the goal. That's the equalizer that. Poro FC further added on to the home team's dismay as Fabuso scored yet again through a well-taken free kick. However, the goal was disallowed for offside. With the motive to regain the lead, Defenders FC came in close several times with quick counter-attacks but failed to convert. On the other hand, Poro FC began to gain momentum with good ball position. Taking advantage of this, Chencho Gelsen gave his side the much-needed lead with a goal in the 24th minute. But Paro FC could not hold on for long as Defenders FC made it all score in the 36th minute. And just when everyone thought the first half ended in a draw, Paro FC bounced back into the game yet again with a late goal in the added times of the first half. Defenders FC made every effort to make their comeback to the game by frequently getting into the box in the second half. Their hard work finally paid off in the 63rd minute as they equalized yet again. Despite good performance by both sides, the match ended in a draw with a scoreline of 3-3. For now, Paro FC is currently leading the race considering the away goal advantage. Meanwhile, Defenders FC will have to win the match by at least one goal or draw the match by scoring four goals or more to make it to the next round. Paro FC will host Defenders FC for the second leg of the qualifiers at the Changlimitang National Stadium on Wednesday next week. The winner of the two-legged tie will then face the champions of the Hero Indian Super League Bangalore FC in the round two of the preliminaries next month. This is Pasan Doji for BBS News. And this brings us to the end of uh, this week's edition of the Bhutan This Week. Until next time, I'm Cheku, signing off all for now.